Okay, we are doing something a little bit different today because of technical difficulties we're recording and this isn't actually live, but so Eva, <laughs> I am so, so grateful to have you here today. I'm going to read her introduction because it's awesome and I could never make it up as good as it's written. So Eva Providell is a leadership coach, communication trainer, and laughter yoga teacher, which we're going to have so much fun talking about that. She helps prof professionals learn to lead from a place of empowerment and confidence. She speaks six languages. She's lived in three continents. She's passionate about helping others grow and develop. In her spare time, she loves to dance the tango and travels the world to explore different cultures and cuisines. And we are providing links to her LinkedIn profile, to the awesome book that she's going to talk about, to in the freebie that she's going to give us today. So be sure to look. If you're at Facebook, look in the comments. Um, we're going to provide a link directly to her dedicated page, which will be happyfirst.org forward slash 47. This is episode 47. So welcome, Eva. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. I'm very happy to be here. Yay. We, I think we, we weathered the technical difficulties with grace, <laughs> and here we are. So tell, yes. me, tell me about the book, Bouncing Back, 107 Tips to Become More Resilient. Start off by telling me what resilient means. Yes. So resilience is a great word. Resilience comes from a Latin word, re salire. Uh, I know because I'm actually Italian, so I studied Latin back in the day. Right. And salire means to go up. So to basically to pick yourself back up when you're being brought down. Uh, pick yourself back up. And this is a, a word that was created in the 1620s. So it has a few years of, uh, a few hundred years of history. And about 200 years later, um, an elasticity meaning was added to it. Hence the bouncing back meaning that we now, that we now have. So it's a beautiful word. Uh, it's a word uh, about, um, uh, for me, like the elastic band, it reminds me of how we are elastic, how we can adapt to things, especially in difficult times. And uh, knowing though uh, what our limits are and um, you know, without reaching breaking point, I think the idea is pick myself back up, explore my limits, uh, but also always being conscious about, about myself. Yeah. And it also reminds me of that uh, stress ball, you know, uh, on the dictionary. Resilience is also about matter and how if you bend it, if you squeeze it, it goes back into its original, original shape. shape. Right. And I, I love the comparison of the word resilient to impervious. So b being impervious means that you are unaffected by things. And that's really no way to get any growth or to get any learning or get any experience. Whereas if you are able to have the full depth and breadth of all the experiences and emerge stronger, emerge more resilient, be affected in positive ways by everything. I just, I really like it. And I'm very excited to hear about your book and yeah. about laughter yoga. Start off by telling us what, what is laughter yoga? This sounds like something I would love to do. <laughs> well, laughter yoga is an Indian practice that is basically about laughing with for no reason. And it's, uh, it's, it's connected to resilience. And after, actually, I wrote a chapter in the book about laughter, about the power of laughter, uh, because laughing is um, coming back to that word impervious. It's the opposite of impervious. It, impervious also means invulnerable in a way, but laughter makes us vulnerable and brings out that child, that childlike spirit that likes to play, that likes to be spontaneous and um, that humanity that really connects us human to human. Uh, so, and, and resilience does that in a way that when we, when we laugh, when, we, when we're ourselves authentically, without worrying about judgment, without worrying about um, everything that's, you know, bogging us down, then all these qualities can, can come forth and, um, and shine, basically. And yeah. That, that, that's awesome. I, I was telling you about the other podcast that I was, uh, I was a guest on this weekend and we talked about this, how, and it's, you, know, you experiment, stand face to face with somebody and one of you start laughing and see if the other person can not laugh. It's not possible. The yes. same with smiles. If you yes. smile at someone on the street, it is nearly impossible for them not to smile back at you. How Absolutely simple. Absolutely true. A We've got the mirror neurons yes. as well. 
Yeah. Uh, even if you don't, it's like an involuntary reaction almost. Right. Exactly. And, and, but, but all your brain doesn't know, your brain doesn't know that you're just, it's just a smile. You get the dopamine, you get the serotonin, you get all of the great things of, of smiling, of laughing. That's so yes. very, very cool. Yes, all right. So right. Tell, tell me about the book. The book, what do you want to know? <laughs> okay, so um, the Hyacinth, your co-author, is going to be on with us yes. on Thursday, so I'm very excited. Yes. Um, tell us why you wrote it, first of all. That, that's always a good, what's, what inspired you? What, what do you want to accomplish by, by publishing this book? So, so bouncing back 107 tips to become more resilient is something that uh, Hyacinth and I co-authored and published over the course of the lockdown. Uh, yes, we were being stuck in the UK, uh, specifically at home with the whole world turned upside down, lots of uncertainty, uncertainties uh, about work, about, you know, about family, about am I going to be able to see people or not. Um, I think a lot of people can relate to this being this a global pandemic. So what we did was like, we, 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 first of all, Hyacinth and I connected through having worked together about three years around development centers and we were going to start doing certain projects together and then this happened and we we talked to each other that one day and we said we need to talk about resilience we need to write a book and uh, we were so excited by it and just like we were saying before this call with you lauren it's learning by doing mm -hmm. we decided this is something we're passionate about this is something that is serving us first and foremost and then we know that it will help others because what we're offering is tools and techniques that are very practical, day-to-day -day things that people can do um, uh, to practice their resilience, to build on their resilience. And so if you look at the, at the book, you will see that it's got, um, you know, it's got you know, a little quote in the, in the beginning and then some, some insights of ours, and then it's got an activity. And of course, it's got, it's got resources, video, books that you can um, then reflect upon. But the activity, is uh, so the, the practicing side of it is what really um, galvanized us almost. It's really about doing it, about getting, getting out there and doing what, even if you feel like it's difficult or impossible, one step at a time, getting started. Yeah, and see, and this is, I, 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 wanna, I wanna talk about at least three of your favorite tips from the book, but I, you know, I, I did the same thing that you do. I'm trying to offer people activities that will help them retrain the way that they think. And our, yeah. our struggle as human beings is that just because we know what to do doesn't mean that we'll do it. And so what, what do you find in your work that it, it, what's the trick, what's the trigger to convince someone that if they will actually do the work, um, I, I prefer to call it play or <laughs> activity <laughs> or, you know, whatever, but, but do the, do this thing, do this thing that's going to help you feel better and think in different ways and change the way you think. What, what are some ideas as to how to get people to get themselves to actually do it? Yeah. So, so first of all, it, I think uh, proselytizing doesn't work. So if I tell you, you should do this, that's not going to work. It's really yep. about what we're doing is really putting out there some ideas, some tips that you can tweak based on your experience and your circumstances. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to want to try it out because of your own reasons, because whatever is happening now is not fulfilling your needs or it's not getting you to your outcomes, or you just want to simply feel better, feel more resilient. Right. And, and, and a lot of people say, yes, resilience, but what is it? How, how do we do it? And so we wrote this book thinking specifically about the hows. And I've got three chapters then that I could uh, talk about, but I do want to say that in this book, you'll find nine pillars that we have selected uh, around, uh, sort of around resilience and how you can look at it from nine, nine different perspectives. And each of these sections, each of this, these pillars has different chapters in it. So this is how we went about it. Would you like me to share one of the, some of the three chapters? How would you like me to do it? Yes, I would. But before you do that, I want to add that the, the way that they've done this is, is that you can just go and pick the chapters that are speaking to you at yeah. the moment. And this is what I'm always teaching that words don't teach. I love your word proselytizing. But if you, if you pick something and you prove to yourself that it works, 
then you will keep doing it. And so I love that. I'm not, that nobody's committed to reading your book from beginning to end in order to get the value. They can go and get the value in different yeah. orders and do the different how to. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. people will do it differently. Some people read it from beginning to end and that's mm -hmm. fine. Right. Uh, the thing is, we're not telling people how to do it. And we've got some feedback from some people saying, uh, some of the readers saying, actually, I use it from time to time when I have a particular issue. I go and look which you know which pillar it's in and then I do the you know the, the activities that I feel are helpful to me in that moment and I feel right. like yeah that's great and, yeah. and anything any way that you feel is helpful to you mm -hmm. perfect awesome awesome leading <laughs> okay so tell us your three favorites one at a right. time it was really hard to choose three favorites, but let, I picked three that I particularly resonate with. Okay. And uh, one is, the first one is chapter one, the very first chapter, which is in the pillar called um, appreciation and celebration. Mm -hmm. So you can see where this is going. Mm -hmm. And the chapter is called celebrate your successes. You can see how that already starts with, wait a minute, what am I not doing here enough of? Right. And I can even speak for myself and think about, you know, if there are, if there are five things that have gone well and one that hasn't gone so well, which one would you tend to mull over? The one that and, doesn't go well. That's our tendency. As <laughs> that's, yeah. And that's human, right? Most of us do that. We will go, oh, I didn't do it well. And what have I done wrong? Oh my God. It becomes this huge thing. But actually, if you go back and look at, at all the other things that happened, why not acknowledge with the same intensity or the same, uh, the same level of, 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 of attention, let's put it that way, all the other things as well. It's, it's about, I think, being fair to yourself, fair to ourselves, mm -hmm. that actually these are the things that I've accomplished that have worked really well, and here is why. So there's a nice little exercise there for those of you mm, listeners who find that they're having a hard time recognizing their own achievements. And, um, first and foremost to ourselves to yourselves mm -hmm. before, even before going out and speaking about them right uh, so a nice little exercise to look at what have you achieved even small things it doesn't have to be huge what are your achievements you know what are the skills that you can recognize you have that come out of what you've done being mm -hmm. really specific with yourself about this is what i've done this is why it worked and mm -hmm. actually that's great you know makes me feel good Right. Yeah. So, the, you know, the, this is, I knew the very first moment I spoke with you that we we're so aligned in our five secrets. One of them is at the end of the day, write down at least three things. Because yes. usually we just go to bed thinking about all the things still left to do, not giving ourselves credit for all the things right. that we did do. And this works whether you're, you know, your big accomplishment is getting up and brushing your teeth. Or if your big accomplishment was having an amazing meeting with your CEO or whatever, no, no matter how, what's going on in your life, you go to bed at night going, I, I'm a winner. I, yes. Yeah. And, and overcoming the negativity bias that's part of our, our primal brain. So, okay, cool. I agree. And I think also being kind to ourselves, because as you said, sometimes we can be under the weather and it's been such an uncertain difficult period of time for many people and so it's okay to not feel great all the time it's okay to you know on one specific day just have you know a small achievement mm -hmm. and and be grateful and be happy for that it's right. it's absolutely fine we don't have to be super heroes all the time every day right <laughs> <laughs> awesome cool Yay. i like chapter one too <laughs> <laughs> okay well, the other one that I picked out, shall I continue? Yes, yes, absolutely. Is, um, chapter 60. Chapter 60 is within the pillar of mindfulness and listening, which is part of resilience in, in how we see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the chapter I picked out for you is called Pause. I'm going to make a pause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's great to pause. It's something that I myself have to remind myself to do as well. So we're not talking here like we're the ultimate experts, you know, actually this is helpful. We're humans. This is helpful to us too, as authors. And this reminds me of, I don't know if you've had this before, but that, that one email that you clicked impulsively and it's gone. And then you're like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. 
Yeah. Does that ring a bell? Because I, I know oh, yeah. it, it does for everyone. Everyone's <laughs> like, oh, I wish I could take that back. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And there's this thing called of recall, but I don't know if that really works. But anyway, once it's sent, it's sent. And the pause could really sometimes get us out of those problematic situations that we would never be, want to be in in the first place. And that required maybe one or two minutes of pause, stepping back and looking at the situation and how do I want to respond now so that it serves the outcome I want? Am I giving way to my impulses, my gut, or do I need to think this through? And sometimes, you know, it's about sleeping over, sleeping it over for over the night and, uh, and then seeing what, what for big decisions, for example, or, or it could be one or two seconds of taking a deep breath. <sighs> okay. Okay. This is what I'm going to do next. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really, really powerful. I think it's so underrated, the pause. <laughs> oh, it's, it, it's, again, it's one of the cornerstones of everything that we teach is we, we want you going through your life, creating your life on purpose, responding in the yes. way that you choose, not just knee jerk reacting all over the place exactly. and letting the whole world determine how your life is going to go and what you're going to think and therefore what you're going to create. So, Brilliant. and Yeah. And so what, what, what are your, I want to hear the activity for how you learned to pause. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think this activity that we thought of is more about, um, first of all, reflecting on when something happened where you did not pause or where you reacted. Because I think you made a really, really um, good distinction there between responsiveness and reaction, reactiveness. Mm -hmm. And so reactive, being reactive means, oh, something happens, boom, 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 I react. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not really, it's, it's impulsive. Mm -hmm. It's, um, it's uh, oftentimes emotional. And emotions are great, but when they get off hand, sometimes they can, you know, influence the situation in a way that we might not like. Yes. And, but, okay, but an impulsive decision from a really fun, cool, happy, awesome place is one kind of impulsive decision. And... I'm so mad at you. I'm going to knock your head off. An <laughs> impulsive, bad, negative feeling is is that. So, making it really important how you feel is is the yes. thing. Okay, so carry on. Yes, because thoughts and mm -hmm. feelings, and then how you behave, how you act, are very deeply connected. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's very difficult to to if you do something knee jerk reaction as as you as you say. If you're feeling anger, say it's very difficult to be calm to act calm. Right. Unless you make a conscious decision. Yeah. So, so it's about being responsive and, and building that through practice. And, and so we, we ask readers to think about a situation where that happened and really analyze what happened, what they were feeling, as you were saying in that moment, what thoughts were going through their heads and so on. And recognize if there's a pattern, for example, because we all have patterns and oftentimes they work, but sometimes they don't, uh, they don't serve us. Mm -hmm. So we want to go to, back to that moment and really analyze what's happening with us and then start practicing, not only in those situations, but in all situations, which, which are the situations in which you can pause. We can start a bit with a small pause and then go a bit lo bigger pause. See what happens. See what the impact is around you because that will have an impact, I can guarantee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything yeah. we do has an impact and, and we're all interconnected. We all influence each other all the time. Right. The tool we teach is meditation because if, if you are a regular meditator, then you've taught your brain that we're not just going off half cocked. We, we think we are mindful. We are, you know, we're pausing all the time and choosing to respond. So awesome. This yeah. Is yeah, absolutely. It's mindfulness. There's a lot of mindfulness in that. Mm -hmm. so, so brilliant. So we're very aligned. That's great. Yes, very much so. <laughs> And the third one is because you mentioned when we first talked about uh, the importance, the importance of words, which I also really believe in and am passionate about. Mm -hmm. I picked out for you uh, chapter 91 out of uh, our 107 chapters, which is called um, Use Empowering Words. And it's part of the pillar called Learning and Motivation. And, and this is kind of going back to what kind of words do you use uh, for example, when you uh, talk about yourself, what kind of words do you use when you talk to yourself? I like to make the example of, uh, you know, if there's a, if, if, let's say it's a difficult moment and we're going through some issues, we tend oftentimes to beat ourselves up. 
Is that not so? Well, I, I certainly have that as well. But imagine now a, a colleague, a friend came to you with the same issue, whatever it is you're going through at this, in this moment, yeah? Mm -hmm. How would you speak to them? Would you speak to them in the same words you speak to yourself? Or rather, do you speak to yourself with the same words you use or you would use with that friend? Right. And I think of a friend and I think, you know, if they are struggling, I will try and be supportive. I will be encouraging them. I will be kind to them. I will um, help them perhaps with questions, help them get through it, you know, let them know I'm there for them and, and, and that warmth. But do I do that with myself? So that's a, an interesting question to ask oneself, isn't it? Yes. What do you, think, it, oh, do you, you know, so this, this is how the universe works. You had no way of knowing this. Um, <laughs> when I sent out the email this morning, I sent an email to my list every Tuesday and Thursday morning. And, you know, I just I give them a brief overview of what's going to, what's coming up on the show. And then I just talk about other stuff that's special, just but for us that, you know, the rest yeah. of the world doesn't get to hear. And the topic of today's email was the stories that you tell. And especially the Fantastic. stories you tell yourself, <laughs> just, just <laughs> exact, you know, the, and the, right. And becoming your own best friend and talking to yourself in that way and telling the story of who you're becoming and letting your past go. It's, I, I yeah. love how this all comes together. Yeah. And giving yourself the credit, your, the credit that you deserve. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we can be, um, well, and of course, this is a generalization. It depends from case to case, but we can be sometimes very humble. Uh, you've, you've earned uh, an, an achievement. You've, made, you've had an achievement. Oh, yeah, but I did it. But it was a group effort. You know, it was we did this. Uh, well, yeah. actually, I, what, what, was, what was my, you know, I, using the word I, that assertive but loving to yourself word is really about recognizing, yes, we've done a team effort, and so that deserve its, deserves its credit. It's great for group motivation. Mm -hmm. But what has been your part in it? It's also in, good to, to know for yourself and perhaps express when helpful what your part in it is, what, yeah. what your specific contribution was to the cause, you know? Now, where, where did you grow up? I'm, I'm very interested in the cultural differences that there might be. Where, 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 where were you raised? I'm Italian, so I was raised in uh, in northern Italy, okay. in uh, Turin and Genoa. Okay, so I, I was raised in the southern United States, and <laughs> we the, there is a whole pervasiveness in the culture around women in this area, or has been, we're getting mm. over that, that you're not supposed to look all full of yourself, and you're not supposed to, you're supposed to go, ah, oh, this old thing, and deflect compliments and not, you know, be full of yourself, not to, don't toot your yeah. own horn that, you know, so for, for women to overcome this society bias and go, yeah, I did this. I'm proud of yeah. this. I'm, I am proud of me. I'm really yeah. great. And I rock and I get things done. And, you know, and you can also, if you look at your bank accounts and they're not re very robust, you can look at the way you receive a compliment and see if you are in a receiving mode. And because the receiving mode is the receiving mode of everything. So if you can accept credit, if you can accept compliments and praise, then you can yeah. accept money and, and you can give those things, a, a, turn around and give them away because giving and receiving are the same energy. So uh, yeah, I, I love this. We have a whole um, chapter in Be Happy First University about these are empowered words and these are disempowered words. Like, yeah. I can't do this because I have to do that is the most disempowered statement in the whole world. You know, yeah. so, you know, that we, we get to choose what we're going to do and we don't have to do anything. So yeah. using yeah. words of, that are like that. Okay. So what's the activity for the empowered words? Is that? Well, the, the activity is, um, this is an interesting one. It's about how you introduce yourself. So I'm not going to give it all away, but uh, okay. um, giving you a little bit of suspense, but it's, it's about practicing how you introduce yourself and, and what words you use to describe yourself and what you do and et cetera, et cetera. So listening in with the help of a friend or someone together, giving each other feedback and listening in, what are the words you use? Are they empowering or disempowering as you were saying? And, mm -hmm. um, and then th through the feedback, which has to be given in a certain way, you know, constructively, specifically, and all of that, 
um, looking at ways to recognize any patterns around self-talk mm -hmm. and to uh, empower yourself first. How do you know, talk, we oftentimes, and, and, and I do recognize, I think for women, this may be a bit more of a struggle, mm -hmm. but this can be uh, also for everyone really. It's, I find it's oftentimes easier to uh, sell, so to speak, something else or someone else then talking about ourselves and our own achievements and what we do in the same way. But right. one word you use, I think is great to start to overcome that, is that being proud. What are you proud of? Mm -hmm. What you said before, Lauren. Right. And that's really like, you know, I'm proud of X, Y, Z. And in, in, when, we, when we teach people about and, and train people about these things, um, we also look at different ways to toot your horn, so to speak, mm -hmm. that may not, that may be uh, perhaps easier to navigate for those who have a bit more difficulty doing that or for societal reasons, for those who are so not uh, encouraged to do so. Let's, baby let's steps to teach them, right? Because to go yeah. from the thinking that only vain, shallow creatures accept compliments to being all proud and, and that, that's a very giant leap. So yeah, providing some baby steps in between there is a great idea. And if you receive a compliment, I always say, start with thank you. Thank you. you know, so Lauren, <laughs> I really love what you do and I'm really enjoying your podcast. And I think you have so many great, useful tools for people in Be Happy First. Thank you. This is my heart and I so love doing it. And I, I, I hope to get better and better at it every day. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Cool. All right. So tell us where, um, tell us where we can go find the book and where we can find you and just give us, and of course I'll put all these links so that you can just click on them, but in case people are only yes. listening, then Fantastic. tell, tell. Yes. So, um, we are called go mind in motion. It, uh, is myself and Hyacinth Fraser are the authors of the book, bouncing back 107 tips to become more resilient. And you can find, find this on Amazon. So you will have the link for Amazon, but you can also find this on our website, gomindinmotion.com. And we also have a little a gift for you, a freebie for you, gomindinmotion.com slash freebie. You will find that in the, in the links where we, we share a little bit about the power of vision and positivity and focus uh, so that you have some activities and inspiration there for your own practices. And uh, we'd be happy for you to, um, uh, to, to take advantage of that, absolutely. Um, where else can you find us? Well, uh, speaking of empowerment, which I think uh, we um, are all sort of stepping into our power, stepping into our leadership, we've got a Facebook group called uh, uh, Dare to Lead. And you can find this on Facebook groups, Go Dare to Lead. And uh, put the go in there because otherwise it'll send you somewhere else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go Dare to Lead. Like go. it. Okay. I like this go thing because it's like, yes. You yeah. know, just get going, kind of right. act, action based. Stop waiting, right? <laughs> yeah, so you can find us there, and and you know, at the links that uh, that uh, Lauren will provide for you, and we really look forward to uh, connecting. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. This was so much fun, as I knew it would be. Everybody do some laughter yoga in your own living room with yes. your own family or on Zoom. You know, if you can see someone's face, that's all you need. To, you to can do. have a laugh now if you like. <laughs> We have been having a laugh for the for the last thirty five minutes. We've been laughing and smiling, and uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Love it. Okay. Well, so um, is there anything else you want to leave us with before we wrap it up for today? What can I leave you with? Um, what can I leave you with? Well, I'm going to say, just do it. Whatever it is you're holding, whatever it is that's holding you back or you're thinking about doing and you haven't done it yet, get started. That first step and then see where it goes and, and also you can do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's T. Harv Ecker that says, ready, fire, aim. So get ready, go do it, then adjust your, <laughs> your path as you go. So. Yes. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you all for listening. This has been the How to Choose Happiness and Freedom Show. I'm your host, Lauren Foster, happiness teacher and founder of Be Happy First. Be sure to like the Be Happy First Facebook page, subscribe to whatever channel you're listening to, check out our Be Happy First Together group on Facebook, and go check out tons and tons of freebies at BeHappyFirst.org. Today's episode with Eva will be at BeHappyFirst.org forward slash 47. Um, and there's a thousand different ways to get there. So we're going to be back with another episode very soon. In the meantime, remember that happiness is a choice. You can always choose to be happy first. Yay. (laughs) Yay. Oh, 